for the best possible results. How far would you travel? Would you take an international flight? To find a hospital that ranked among the very best in the world for the treatment of heart attacks. For the best possible results in nine cardiac care measures, just how far would you go? St. Tammany Parish Hospital, world-class healthcare, close to home. Welcome to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. I'm your host, Amanda Paxton. Today we have Dr. Samer Shamia from Disc of Louisiana, a spine surgeon, here to discuss the spine, back pain, and how minimally invasive surgery can help. Welcome, Dr. Shamia. Thanks for having me. Um, so what kind of questions do patients ask you when it comes to spine surgery? Sure. Um, the, the main question they ask is, you know, do I need spine surgery? And one of the things I tell them is not many people need spine surgery. It's more of an elective procedure. So there are a lot of options to go through besides surgery. Okay. And what questions should they ask their surgeons if whether it's you or another back surgeon are there specific questions that they should be asking sure you know one of the questions that they ask me is how many of these procedures have you done and you know, I, I tell them you know thousands of these procedures um, and you want to know their background the physician's background um, make sure that they talk to you like a human being because after all you know they're all patients um, and so, you know, make sure that the, the doctor is board certified as well in their specialty. Okay. What are some misconceptions people have about spine surgery? Some of the misconceptions are that if you have surgery, it has to be a fusion procedure. And once patients hear that word, fusion, they really get scared off. Um, another uh, frequent question that they ask me or misconception that they, they have is that once you have a fusion that your neck is going to be very rigid or your low back is going to be rigid and you can't move, which is not in fact the case. Uh, the other misconception is people talk about laser spine surgery. There really is no such thing as laser spine surgery, but I get that question very commonly. It's a very heavily marketed uh, uh, topic and you know, it doesn't make sense that a laser or a hot beam of light would go near your spine or your nerve roots. Mm -hmm. Why Why would that be marketed? Or sure. is it just a rumor that keeps getting shared? No, it's a, it's a very heavily marketed uh, topic because people want to bring those patients to them. And a lot of the times they only accept cash where you know, most of the uh, spine surgeons that do true uh, spine surgery you know, we take all insurances and, and whatever your insurance offers. Okay. Can you describe the cervical spine and what it does? So the cervical spine is, is the seven bones in your neck. Um, and it allows to have all kinds of range of motion. It allows you to rotate, flex and extend. Um, and it houses the spinal cord, which is uh, the tunnel from where messages go from your brain to your arms and legs. So uh, a lot of the nerve roots come out of holes or openings in the uh, cervical spine. Um, and in between the, the bones are things called discs or cushions. So uh, those cushions allow us to have that range of motion. Okay. Can cervical issues cause more than just neck pain? Sure. So uh, if there's a herniated disc, uh, a herniated disc is much, I say a disc is like a jelly donut. So the jelly spits out of the donut and pushes on one of the nerve roots that goes into the arms. Um, so if you have numbness in one of your arms, if you have weakness, if you find yourself dropping things uh, or unable to hold a pencil or your handwriting is uh, starting to worsen, those are all symptoms and signs of cervical uh, disc herniation or stenosis, which is just a compression or a, a narrowing of an opening. And is the disc herniation the most common cervical spine issue that you encounter? Are there others? Sure. Um, one of the most common is a disc herniation. Another one of the most common is uh, degenerative disc disease. I think that's something that a lot of people uh, have heard of. Over time, the disc that's in between the two bones loses its shock absorbability 
or it loses, it loses its cushion. And so what happens is the, the height between the bones goes down. When that happens, the joint in the back of the spine starts rubbing against each other like bone on bone. So that's where the pain comes from and it starts rubbing that cartilage that's normally in the joint, so causing pain. Okay. And so what are the most common cervical procedures that you perform? There are three main ones that I perform. One is a minimally invasive laminectomy where I make a small incision, uh, approximately two centimeters or less than one inch, and I put a tube in the back of the neck and just free up the nerve root. That would only be for arm pain. The second procedure that I do is a cervical fusion where you make a little incision less than an inch in the front of the neck, go take that disc completely out and replace it with hardware that'll fuse the bones together. The advantages to that is that's the gold standard. That's what we've been doing for years and it's gotten very good results for pain relief and decompression of your nerves. Um, the one disadvantage would be that it adds pressure to the level above and below. So many people, once they get a fusion, uh, another fusion procedure, maybe 15, 20 years down the line, is necessary. So the third surgery and the most uh, recent advance in spine technology is the cervical disc replacement. And that's really what we specialize at Disco Louisiana in. Um, it allows you to have the complete range of motion that you would have normally in the spine. Okay, and is that an experimental procedure or is it FDA approved? So that's FDA approved. Okay. And the uh, type of equipment that I use, I'm FDA approved to do two different discs at the same time. It's the only one out there that is FDA approved for two discs. Okay, and why is, why is it that you can do it and other surgeons can't? Well, it takes a little more training. It's technically more demanding. And um, it, you know, not everybody is a candidate for the disc replacement. If you have severe arthritis or you have instability, then you're, it's not for you. Um, but you know, if you're a young person, such as uh, both of us, and you have a disc herniation pushing, pushing on a, uh, a nerve root down to the arm, it's an excellent procedure. Okay. And how long can an artificial cervical disc last? The only data that we truly have is in the last 10 years because that's when it came out. Um, but the early data is very good, that it's superior to a fusion. And you know, it should last the rest of your life. Okay. What effects would a fusion have on the rest of your cervical spine? I kind of alluded to that a little earlier where um, once you lock up you know, one joint or one disc uh, in your neck, the level above that and the level below that gets pressure. Uh, and so it's faster to degenerate or faster to lose its cushion. So, you know, you may have increased pain a little sooner and may need treatment at that disc level, you know, approximately 15, 20 years down the line. Okay. Um, I've heard about football players having minimally invasive spine surgery and being back on the field pretty quickly. Is this because they have a higher pain tolerance or is it because of the surgery? It's really because of the surgery. I think one of the main examples recently who's been in the news is Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. uh, Peyton, if ev everyone remembers, he had uh, trouble with his right arm and his, that's his throwing arm. So what happened was he had a herniated disc in his neck at cervical six, seven, affecting his triceps. So he had a weak tricep. So if you imagine throwing a football, uh, if your triceps is weak, you're not gonna get much zip on the ball. Um, so what they did was, they did the first procedure that I mentioned, the minimally invasive laminectomy. And that treated his pain for about a year and a half or two years. But the disc re-herniated, it came back out, it pooched back out, and it caused him to have quite a bit of weakness in that triceps. So then they went in and they made a small incision in his neck, took the entire disc out and replaced it with a piece of bone and a plate and screws. So he had the fusion procedure. And you know, as everyone knows, he just won the Super Bowl. So just because you have these procedures doesn't mean that it's the end of your life or it's the end of your career. You can go on to do great things. Okay. Um, so what are the most common conditions of the lumbar spine? The most common condition is degenerative disc disease. Um, 
approximately 90% of patients throughout their lifetime are going to have some type of episode of low back pain. So it's an extremely common thing. Um, if we all live long enough, the water will exit the disc and so the disc will lose its absorbability of strains and stress on the body. I mean, if you think about it, all of your body weight goes through your low back. Mm -hmm. Okay, what age do people usually start having lumbar spine issues? So young people can have it. Um, if, if you bend over and pick something up off the floor, if you sneeze, you can get a herniated disc. Um, you know, but typically degenerative disc disease starts around the age of 50 years old and only gets worse from there. Okay. Um, we hear back pain described by a lot of different terms, sciatica, herniated disc, pinched nerve. What's correct? So, uh, you know, low back pain is a category all in of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, sciatica describes, it's a, just a general term for leg pain. Uh, there's a sciatic nerve that runs down the back of your leg. So anybody that has leg pain, you can use a general term of sciatica. Pinched nerve is a, is a common term uh, for a herniated disc that's pushing on the nerve or pinching the nerve. Um, another common term is a stenosis or, you know, stenosis, you normally have a, a hole that big. Stenosis is just a narrowing of the hole to that big. Mm -hmm. um, can we prevent lumbar spinal issues? Um, you can prevent some spinal issues uh, by proper lifting techniques, uh, core strengthening uh, with physical therapy or your, your abdominal muscles. Um, but, you know, if we all live long enough, we're all going to get some form of degenerative disc disease. Gotcha. Um, what are the minimally invasive lumbar surgery options? How are they different from traditional surgery? Sure. So with traditional surgery, you make a long incision in the back. You cut away all the skin, soft tissue, and muscle to be able to visualize the entire spine. And what that does is it increases your chance for infection. Your infection rate is 5 to 10% with open procedures. It increases the chance for blood transfusions. It is very painful, increases your hospital stay. With minimally invasive procedures, I can do the same exact surgeries through very small, less than one inch incisions. So knock on wood, I've never had an infection in three and a half years. Uh, the hospital stays are significantly shorter, almost half. The pain is significantly less, and I rarely, rarely give a blood transfusion. Okay. And how is it possible to do it with such a small incision? Sure. So what we are able to do with the new technology is have these retractors that go down to the spine and then spread the muscle. Instead of cutting the muscle, we go down with dilators and then we spread the muscle. Once that is, uh, the muscles are spread, we attach it to an arm to the bed that's very rigid. So then we're looking down the tube through a microscope with a light in it. So we're able to do everything possible without, you know, all the damage to the tissue surrounding the spine. Okay. And how quickly do patients recover from that type of surgery? So minimally invasive procedures allow a much quicker recovery. And some of the people that can, you know, confirm this are physical therapists and chiropractors that see the patients after the surgery, they're able to get into rehab much quicker. You know, a neck surgery, patients are back to work in two to three weeks. A, uh, a minimally invasive discectomy, where we just remove a portion of the disc in the low back, you know, patients can be back to work in two to three weeks. Fusions are a little longer for the, uh, for the low back. It's probably around four to six weeks. Okay. What is unique about performing surgery at St. Tammany Parish Hospital? One of the unique features that they have there is something called the O-arm. Uh, the O-arm is a navigational device. It's like an intraoperative CT scanner. And so what happens is it comes in as a C in the middle of surgery and surrounds the patient like a Pac-Man and then closes like that so it becomes an O. And once that does that, you take images in the surgery allowing me to see the spine without actually seeing it. And so I'm able to place hardware in the spine without cutting the muscle by just moving my hands in real time like a video game. 
uh, I call it like a GPS navigation of the spine. And so you can insert all the hardware, you know, screws and rods and everything we normally do uh, through very small incisions. So what that does is, like I said before, decreases the pain and decreases the time for surgery as well. Okay, and why aren't more hospitals and surgeons, surgeons performing minimally invasive spine surgery? So minimally invasive spine surgery is very technically demanding. It's very highly specialized. I was lucky that uh, during my training, I was able to do that uh, in my fellowship that I chose specifically for minimally invasive spine surgery. I think if someone were to just, you know, a surgeon just in the middle of his practice were wanting to do minimally invasive spine surgery, they would have to take about six months to a year off of their practice and go learn how to do it specifically. Um, so it, it, it's, it's coming up now and people are wanting it more and more and actually patients are asking for it. However, uh, not many people offer it. Okay. And how can this procedure be considered an outpatient procedure? Sure, so most of the things I do are considered outpatient. Um, the neck surgeries, the neck, uh, the fusions, the disc replacements, and the laminectomies can all go home the same day if they'd like. A lot of the patients want to stay overnight just to make sure everything's okay. But the lumbar laminectomies that I perform can all go home the same day. So it's, uh, it's less costly for the hospital, less costly for the insurance companies and the patient, as well as uh, you know, a lot of patients don't like to stay in the hospital, so it's, it's very attractive. Okay, and um, I guess another misconception is that they might have to wear a brace or something like that. Do any of your patients have to wear a brace after surgery? Sometimes uh, the patients have to wear a brace for approximately, you know, two to three weeks for a lumbar laminectomy mm -hmm. um, or a fusion, approximately four weeks to six weeks. However, for a disc replacement, you don't have to wear a brace. So none of them would have to wear a brace their whole life? Or? Oh, no, no. This would be a, for a very short time period uh, in the post-operative period. Okay. And what do you see coming in the future of minimally invasive spine surgery? Um, you know, I think just different uh, advancements in the way that we attack the spine. Um, you know, a lot of people have quite a few uh, issues, especially in the lumbar spine. So um, the newest technology is that I can go in from the side and make a small incision and use a specialized retractor to where I can do up to three different disc levels to do a lumbar fusion. Not many people need that, but you know that just goes to show you the, um, the capabilities of that retractor system. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us this information. Um, you can find out more about Disc of Louisiana and Dr. Shamia at gospine.com. G-E-A-U-X spine.com. Up, up next, we have an occupational therapist from St. Tammany Parish Hospital to discuss a little bit about back pain and recovery. When it comes to your family's health, you want the best. That's exactly why St. Tammany Parish Hospital and Auctioner are now working together by uniting two of the highest quality healthcare organizations in the state, we can bring everyone in St. Tammany Parish a higher level of specialty care with advanced procedures and the most advanced technology. Because when your healthcare is better, so's your life. Welcome back to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. Our next guest is Mark Paxton, an occupational therapist from St. Tammany Parish Hospital's therapy department. Welcome, Mark. Good morning. He's here to discuss some adaptive equipment that patients can use after back surgery to maintain their independence. Can you tell us a little bit about the equipment you brought today? Sure. What we have here today is um, some equipment that a person would use if, let's say, they've had back surgery, and because of the back surgery, they have limited mobility. Um, they may be restricted from bending for a time period. Um, a lot of times they will have back braces that they have to wear. And so because of, because of this, they're unable to do things like putting their shoes on, socks, getting their pants on. So what I have here today is some equipment that we would typically give to a patient, teach them how to use it so that they can be more independent after a back surgery. Okay. Okay. So first I'd like to show you is this is, just, this is a standard reacher. Patients love these. They're great. They can pick things up off the floor with them. Um, but they're also great for using, like I said, to get dressed, get shoes and socks off and on. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how I would teach a patient to do that, okay? So 
what I've got here, I'm going to use this, the tip here, the little screw, and I'm going to push my shoe off, okay? And then I'm going to take the sock off. Yeah. So, I apologize, I didn't get a pedicure done before I did this, so <laughs> we'll just have to deal with it. All right, so, um, so the next device I'm going to show you is this called a sock aid, or sock helper, which a lot of patients like to call it. Um, these are great because what you're able to do is you, you're able to get your socks back on without having to worry about bending over. So we throw it out there like that, stick the toe in, and pull. Mm, that's awesome. The sock is on. All right. And then what we do next is, I don't know if you've noticed, but in my shoe, I've um, laced in some elastic shoelaces, okay? And that's so that patients don't have to <clears throat> retie their shoes every time. And so this is just an example of an elastic shoelace. You see, you can stretch it out like that. It makes it really nice for patients. Um, so like I said, you get, you get someone to tie it once for you, then you don't have to tie it again. So then you've got a couple of options as far as getting your shoes on. This is a long handle shoehorn. So what some patients like to do it, they would get their shoe in like this, get their foot in, get the shoe horn behind, and then slide the shoe, slide the foot in. Now, personally, we, I have another device that I kind of like a little bit better, so I'm going to show you that one. Okay. okay. And this is, can be used after back surgery, but also other types of procedures yeah, that um, patients have? Hip replacements are a real big diagnosis that we use. Um, for the with the adaptive equipment uh, sometimes patients with knee replacements also will use them if they have some limited mobility but typically hip replacements are the big one because they they also cannot bend over for a while after their surgery okay this device is called a shoe funnel okay what's great about this one is you just stick it in the back of the shoe like this okay you grab your reacher grab it by the tongue and it, it, provide, it keeps the, the, the back of the shoe firm so that you can, voila. Awesome. Okay. And then finally, you know, you, everyone likes to take a shower, <laughs> but we can't reach our feet. So we got this nice little extended sponge here so that you can reach your feet, do your back. Um, we can also use the reacher for putting on pants. Now, I didn't bring any pants to kind of demonstrate, but I mean, basically what you do is you would grab the, you would grab the pants by the waistline and then just thread them over your feet, pull them up, stand up, and then pull your pants back up. Okay, and so is this equipment that is provided by the therapist or is in, does insurance cover it after surgery? Well, unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover it. Um, St. Tammany, when, when, if you have a patient who is ours, we do provide equipment for our patients. It's just one of those things that we like to do for our patients because we believe it's important. Um, if, you, if you're someone on the outside who hasn't been a patient and you think you need this equipment, there are a lot of um, durable medical equipment providers in the parish that, can ha that have these. Um, there's also a lot of companies online that can do this. Um, I can't necessarily recommend a particular company, um, but my suggestion would be just go online, type in durable medical equipment, mm -hmm. and you, you will be able to find something. Okay, and to get therapy at the hospital, is that through doctor's orders? Is that something you have to request from your physician? Yes. Um, you know, t typically our physicians are very good at St. Tammany about ordering therapy after they've had some type of surgery. Um, you know, sometimes we have patients that just have been debilitated because they've been living alone um, or they've had some type of other illness that has caused them to become debilitated. And so if you think you need therapy, what you need to do is just talk to your primary care physician and ask them if um, you can get orders for therapy. And we have an outpatient therapy clinic at St. Tammany Parish Hospital, provides a lot of different services, hand therapy, shoulder surgery, knee surgery, lymphedema, I mean, all kind of different uh, services. So yes, sir, all you need is a doctor's order and you can come. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for being here and showing us this equipment. I would like to thank Dr. Samer Shamia and Mark Paxton for being my guests today on Healthy Living, and we'll see you next time.